Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, Christ, all true, the only light, Son of righteousness, arise, Triumph over the shades of night, Day spring from on high be near, Day star in my heart appear. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Ascribe to the Lord you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory. 
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The Word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were coming out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in my sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way. And who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show us the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down. Come on down. Let's go down. Oh, brothers, let's go down. Down in the river to pray. When I was a child in the summertime, we would, on some Sunday afternoons, go to Carter Cave State Park. Often as we turned the bend into the park above the Tigers Creek, we would see a gathering of the faithful, watching and singing and praying as people were baptized there in the deepest part of the creek. Let's go down to the river to pray. Good Lord, show us the way. 
show us the way to pray and to repent. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness. All were going out to him from the city, from the countryside, to the Jordan River to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. Good Lord, show us the way. Jesus also went there to the river and was baptized. And he came up out of the water. And he saw the heavens torn apart, torn apart. Wilderness and rivers and the heavens torn apart. This is the telling of the story in the Gospel of Mark. This is the very first chapter of this Gospel. No manger, no baby, no manger in this telling. This is it. This is where we jump into the Jesus story in Mark. In the wilderness, in the river, with a locust-eating wild man and with the heavens torn apart. After this, immediately, Jesus himself is led by the Spirit into the wilderness to struggle with the forces there. This baptism is where and how Mark begins the telling of the Jesus story. And our baptism is where and how we make a formal entry into our Christ-centered journey. But over the years of Christianity, the signs and the symbols of the entry got smaller, more sanitized, less threatening. The wilderness and the river got reduced to water in a little bowl that gets sprinkled on one's head. <coughs> Excuse me. Yet today's readings remind us that baptism is more than an acknowledgement of the birth of a child, more than a happy occasion for the church to get together. It is those things, but it is so much more. We began today with the great story of creation, a wind from God sweeping over the darkness. Then in Acts, we have Paul baptizing again those who, whom John baptized, baptizing them into Christ's baptism to receive the Holy Spirit. They begin to speak in tongues and prophesy. The wilderness is symbolic in the Bible, representing power and unknowable essences, a place of drama and confrontation. And it is also a real place, a real place on the earth, a place of drought and heat and limited resources. Wilderness. John comes from the wilderness calling for repentance. O oh Lord, show us the way. I've been in my own house, as most of you have been, for 10 months. Maybe that's why baptism in the river and the wilderness calls to me right now. And the power of the Holy Spirit imparted through baptism speaks to me. Regardless of the outward sign used, a small bowl of water in the church, a creek in eastern Kentucky, or a river in the wilderness, baptism is powerful. One baptism for the forgiveness of sin and entry to the mystical life with Jesus grace imparted to us in us and through the sacraments. Most particularly baptism in the Eucharist. The sacraments, the outward and visible sign of inward spiritual grace given by Christ. The outward and visible sign in baptism is water. The waters of creation. Water. The grace is God's favor towards us, unearned and undeserved, that enlightens our minds, stirs our hearts, and strengthens our will. Let me say that again. The grace given is God's favor towards us, unearned and undeserved, that enlightens our minds, stirs our hearts, and strengthens our will. And I'm telling you, we can all use some of those gifts these days, right? Enlightened minds, stirred hearts, and strong wills. The sacraments. The word for sacrament comes from the same root, of course, as sacred, holy. I watched the news a lot this week. I watched on Wednesday as a mob encouraged by the president overran the Capitol. I listened to and I read many senators and representatives and journalists and others speak 
about what they saw and experienced that day. And I was struck by how many people, particularly journalists, spoke of the Capitol as sacred space, that that's how they had always experienced that place, as sacred space. Sacred, awe-inspiring space. So many people felt that sacred space had been violated. That word used over and over to describe the halls of Congress, just, it just caught my attention. I have lots of thoughts about all that is, has and is unfolding in our country, as I'm sure all of you do also. I personally had not considered those billet buildings as so hallowed, but I did also have a sense of violation and alarm as I watched and the more I heard as the details have emerged. I believe President-elect Biden said, this is not who we are. This is not who America is. And I think I need to disagree with that. Because if we are going to find our way out of this, we need to start with telling the truth as accurately as we can. This is who we are. It's not all that we are. It's not who all of us are. But it is a very real and a very large part of America. Truth matters. Sacred space and ideas matter. Our words matter. Leadership matters. This is America. And those were Americans waving Confederate flags and storming the Capitol with near immunity, with glee, with complete confidence in their right to be there doing that. Many have commented on the difference between the treatment received by this group, including the preparation made when all have known for months that this demonstration was coming, and the treatment that Black Lives Matter protesters received across the country all summer. Racism and violence and selfishness are very much alive in America. It's not all that we are, or who all of us are, but we must face this and address it. We all have our parts to play in the restoration of this country, in the healing of division, in finding a way forward. We can begin today by reaffirming our baptismal vows and then living into them, and by insisting on the truth in ourselves and from our leaders. Our words matter, sacred spaces matter, ideals matter, accountability matters. Let us go down to the river to pray. Good Lord, show us the way. Good Lord, show us the way. Amen. Please join with us in the reaffirmation of our renewal and renewal of our baptismal vows. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. 
Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for all who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For God's people throughout the world, for our bishop, and for all the clergy and people. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia, and in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Youth Community, Cindy Sigmund, Youth Minish Missioner, and Daughters of the King, Diocesan Chapter, Martha Davenport, President. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless the human family, O Lord. Bless the poor. Bless the hungry. Bless those who now weep. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless this good creation, O Lord. All things were made through you and by your resurrection. They are given new life. We thank you that you are already making all things new. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless is our community, O Lord. May we be known as a generous people doing to our neighbors as we would have them do unto us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us amid our struggle for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer for those with whom we, dis we disagree and are in conflict, with whom we struggle to understand and be in a relationship, and from whom we are divided, that you may bless them and give them all the good things that we want in our own lives and the lives of those we love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As we seek Christ in all persons, may we not fail to recognize him in lives broken by poverty, illness, and oppression, and those we sometimes consider burdensome and inconvenient. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Gerald Donahue, brother of Rob Donahue, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and that we pray that we may share with you all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray especially for all those we love, Alan family, Anna, Robert, Fran, Jan, Betty, Bob, Bradley, Diana, Scott, Jennifer, Mary, Nicole, Courtney, Herman, Ryan, Elaine, Esteline, Sarah, Jennifer, Bernie, Chase, David, Edward, Vicki, Corbin, Dawn, James, Jill, Linda, Ken, Carrie, Kylie, Laura, Andy, Thomas, Lauren, Clarence, Beverly, Melanie, Michael, Molly, Keith and Samantha, Nancy, Nathaniel, Patrick, Renee, Doug, Caden, Richard and Frederica, Mel, Sheila, Olivia, Elizabeth, and Teresa. For those serving in the armed forces and their families. Sean, Sean, Marissa, Brianna, Andrew, and Cliff. For our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. 
please add your own intentions, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Share the peace with those around you. Blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.